Good morning. God bless you on a Sunday morning. Cindy's finishing up the attendance. We're getting closer to Wi-Fi in the clubhouse. There's Wi-Fi, but I don't know the password yet. We'll get it. We'll get this yet. Yeah, maybe. So... We do upload the service a little later in the day. We record it. We record Cindy and I. And they hear your lovely voices, so sing out. Probably not too many announcements. Not much going on. Give me oil and 
my lamp keep me burning Give me oil in my lamp, I pray Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning Keep me burning till the break of day Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna Give me hope in my life, keep me praying. Give me hope in my life, I pray. Give me hope in my life, keep me praying. Praying till the break of day. Say Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing. Sing, 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 sing. Give me strength in my life, keep me humble. Give me strength in my life, I pray. Give me strength in my life, keep me humble. Humble till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Cast down, uh uh, don't be discouraged. You will be tried along the way. Don't let those burdens overcome you. You know the Lord will make a way. Lift up your hands, rejoice in Jesus. Lift up your voice, let praise it ring. Lay down those burdens that carry. Lift up your eyes. Trusting Jesus, we can by faith face anything. Lift up your hand, rejoice in Jesus. Lift up your voice, let praise ring. Take down those burdens that you carry. Lift up your eyes and see the King. Praise is the key to overcoming. The Spirit comes on wings of praise the Lord. Sing hallelujah. We're growing stronger every day. Lift up your hands. Rejoice in Jesus. Lift up your voice. The praise that rang. Take down those burdens that you carry. Lift up your eyes and see the King. Lift up your eyes and see the King. Lift up your eyes and see the king. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, thanks for this morning. We do call you king, Lord, and we worship you. We thank you that you give us this opportunity to come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And in Jesus' name we gather and pray. And all God's people said, Amen. amen. Who all God's people said, Amen. I said, you had to walk up the channel too. Do that cover up the nose thing. <laughs> Double masking now is the big rage. Oh boy. <laughs> Lucky you didn't get one to stay in place. Lord Perry. Praise God. Jesus. I gotta get your mom. Eric Thibodeau. Yeah. Gregory Thibodeau. Yeah. Daryl Waterman. Right here. Judy Waterman. Here. Amelia Johnson. Okay, thank you. Bob Johnson. Present. Len Heinen. Here. Ellen Heinen. Here. Joy Bailey. Here. Mary DeShano. Here. Stella Boyhill. Here. Alistair Boyhill. Hello. Chuck Haight. Here. Carolyn Haight. Here. Miguel Maldonado. Present. Mary Marshall. Here. Gerald Dante. Here. Al Klein. Present. Patty Haslett. Here. Joe Haslett. Here. Betty Worthley. Here. Did I see Frank? I didn't I see Frank. Frank. Frank O'Kay? Yes. Jack Hent. 
Here by proxy. Okay. Kathy Hen. Here. Mary Ann Haradney. Here. George Wall. Present. Peggy Martin. Here. Sherry Wolfgang. Hello. Anna Palladino. Here. Did I miss anybody? Lucinda. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who did I miss? Praise God. We sing number 21 every week. When that trumpet the Lord will sound, we'll gather. Must be. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time will be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore, the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies, the roll is called of yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called of yonder, when the roll is called of yonder, when the roll is called of yonder. And our role is called a ponder. Until then, let us labor for the master from the dawn to the setting sun. Talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, the role is called a yonder, I'll be there. When the role is called a yonder, when the role is called a yonder, when the role called up yonder when a roll is called up yonder will be there amen. amen we'll say our prayers we'll lift up those prayers on a hymn or two of the faith and then I got a message from God's word then we go on to love and serve our Lord and Savior that other other string broke Cindy, hear some prayers on the way in? I did. Me too. Uh, Gerald Dante's friend's mom is on life support in JFK Hospital in New Jersey. So her name is Maria. Yes. And so we want to uh, remember her today. They may be taking a life support off next week. Miguel Jr. is in the hospital. He's in Miami and uh, breathing in his heart. So we want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, Bob Cooper is still in the hospital. He's been moved closer to home. So very surely, and Bob will keep our prayers. A lot going on there. Peggy Shane is still in rehab. I talked to her. I think I talked to her last Sunday. She sounds good, but she's got a ways to go, I think. And you've, you've been seeing her, Jean. And she's I've been talking with her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's got a ways to she go. She thinks she's like halfway there. The spasms are less, and mm. she can't get more rehab, which is good. Yeah. Physical rehab. That's good. Um, Amelia has lost one of her uh, longtime friends from back in her school days. So <coughs> her name is Sandy. So we're going to keep Sandy's. Family and Amelia in our prayers. And um, Amy Johnson, Amelia's granddaughter, we always want to continue to pray for her. And uh, Joe Perry's not here today, so I'm hoping Joe's okay. I know he's got a lot going on. So keep Joe and Sandra in our prayers. Keep the, uh, Don Atwell and uh, Tom and Jane in our prayers today. They're okay, but they just could come today. 
Any notes? Yes, George. Uh, my grandson's got uh, COVID-19. Okay. And uh, my ex-wife died last week. Um, there's a resident here, his name is Charlie Moran, his sister, she lives here, she lived here also, she just passed away this week, and I'd like everyone to keep him in a, their prayers for Charlie. Charlie Moran's sister. Nobody there knows him, but my best friend, my workout buddy, and worked at the high school with me for many years. He, he was a little bit older than I am, but I'll tell you, we used to do some unbelievable workouts. And just this last week, he finally passed after about four years of just total hell. He went through all kinds of serious problems. I talked to his wife, and uh, it's actually a blessing that he finally went. But he was, he and I were animals. <laughs> I'm still paying for mine. <laughs> Thank you. What, what's, what was his name here? Uh, Ed Biondi. B-I-O-N-D-I. -I. He's an artist, a guidance counselor. He could do anything. Beautiful. He's a great guy. And up in Binghamton? Hmm? In Binghamton? Yeah, up in Ithaca, New York. Ithaca? Where we taught high school. Yeah, I miss him. I've, I've missed him for many years now. Hasn't been himself. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Let's pray. My heart is steadfast, O oh God. I will sing and make melody with all my being. Awake, O oh harp and lyre. I will wake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved ones may be delivered. 
Give salvation by your right hand and answer me. God has promised in his holiness with exaltation, I will divide up Shechem and portion out the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah my scepter, Moab is my wash basin. Upon Edom I cast my shoe, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Have you not rejected us, O God? You do not go out, O God, without with our armies. O grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. Yes, with you, God, as you promised in all your holiness to give us help against our foes, we praise you and glorify your name. We are sorry for our sins. Let us glorify your name in all the earth and do it with exhilaration. Be not silent, O God, of my praise. Make your presence felt and pour it over the grieving throng of believers today. Let them be comforted. Thank you for continued healings. Give strength and courage to those going through treatments, surgeries, and facing frightening uncertainties. Lord, have mercy. Be with Clark today. Let his words be your words. Let him speak only the truth. We pray for our nation, our president, guide, protect our military, and first responders. Thank you for scientists, for doctors and nurses, and for knowledge. Help us look to you, to follow you, to focus on you. Father, you heard the names of those lifted before you today, the spoken and the unspoken, Grant that all their needs would be met according to your will. These and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us all to pray. Our Father, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord, our Lord. Let's lift up those prayers on a couple of hymns. I would uh, stand and sing Sweet By and By. What, what number is that? Just stretch your legs a little bit. Page 20. If you're able. Page 20 in the hymn, Sweet By and By. <coughs> There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet Sweet 
until you try to sing a cappella. <laughs> but I want to tell you, that was beautiful. I feel like I could hear a lot of different voices and I could hear the harmonies because I picked a bad pitch and you had to find something that sounded good. <sighs> We've made it through the first month of 2021. Yes, it's something worthy to, to thank God for. I know in the first couple weeks, Cindy and I challenged you with some New Year's kind of messages. And certainly, one of the things to do is maybe have a word or two that you want to focus on during the year. Patience or joy. Mine was trust. But that's not the word that popped up in my devotionals this week. It was the word peace. And by golly, thank you, God, for breaking that guitar string. Because it made us take a deep breath and, okay, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to sing. We're going to sing. We don't need the instruments. We've got the sacred harp. That's the sacred harp singing, the shape note singing. It's just your voice is, is pleasing to God. And, and even that voice that's... that's kind of an internal silent voice when you say, oh God, why? That's your sacred harp saying. But this week, and Wednesday in particular, you know, all day this, this concept of peace with God came, came to me. And it's, it's hard in these days. And you don't have to listen long to our prayers to hear of losses in families, the COVID, the, the challenges we're having. So where can you find this peace? We hear it all the time, and it is fueled by the scriptures. I mean, Paul, in his letters, is always saying in his greeting, grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter ends his letters with, peace be to you. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, it's the peace chapter. If you have a friend, a loved one, Someone who's looking, grasping for some scripture in this 14th chapter of John. The 27th verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. John 14 verse 27. But, but wait, God, you mean in the face of this COVID, don't be afraid? Jesus says, don't be afraid. I, I lost the closest person in my whole life, a friend, a family member. And you're asking me to, to not be afraid and to, to be at peace? Jesus asks us that. And if you've ever been challenged by some, someone, how can God be three people, the Trinity? It's never mentioned in scriptures that phrase, Trinity. But if you have your friend, family, loved one, someone who's searching, read this 14th chapter of John. You'll hear all about God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. That's why Billy Graham and other folks at their crusades, at their gatherings, the one little track that they have to give out to people is the Gospel of John. Just one little book, of just the one book of John. 
and it can give some peace. Paul says in Colossians 3, the 15th verse, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Colossians 3, 15. It's, in the COVID, we've been watching a lot of Westerns. Errol Flynn, and who was last night's guy, Cindy? You see him a lot. Uh, hmm? Gabby Hayes. Yeah, he's from, he was born in Wellsville, I think, near where we live in New York State. And all these Westerns, quite often and occasionally, there's a new sheriff in town. Pat Masterson. Errol Flynn, that's who it was. Errol Flynn playing Pat Masterson. And he brings justice and he brings peace to these wild west towns. That's what Jesus brings. He brings peace, but he brings it with a rule. Paul says, Colossians 3.15, let the peace of Christ, Christ rule in your heart. And the 16th verse, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Teach and admonish one another in wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. I had a real sense for that today. Thanks, Lord. I was struggling for an illustration to this sermon, and there it was. We, we sang together so beautifully, just, just our voices, raised in hope. I got all my people at home are going to see it better than you can, but I just clipped out, made copies of the, my Wednesday devotionals, and it just overwhelmed me, this spirit of peace. Joshua 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Wouldn't that be the op opposite of being at peace? Don't be terrified. Be at peace. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. In that devotional, Grace for Today, many people try to discover the secrets of what the future holds, but nobody really knows what's in store for us. And it reminded me of a, a song we listened to. It's by For King and Country. They played at Dade City, the drive-in, on uh, the weeks before Christmas. We went to a beautiful concert, safe and distant, sitting in our car at the drive-in movie, but the band was really there. And this Christian rock group sings with, of all people, Dolly Parton. <laughs> it's amazing. And Dolly Parton sings some wonderful gospel tunes. And it, she sings this song with King and Country, for King and Country, God Only Knows. God Only Knows. And we think we see the end of this virus. But what pops up? Double masking. Because now there's two or three variants. God only knows, but Jesus says, have peace with this. Have my peace. Not like the world gives, gives peace. When Christ lives in your heart and in your thoughts, you will be able to face the future without fear. So here's what I was grasping at. I think it was, what, well, what, what are some of the things that are opposite from being at peace? And that's fear, living without fear. Then one of my favorites, Max Lucado, was look at, look at the sun, S-O-N, in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. These are familiar verses. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12 is a great passage to go to when you're looking for encouragement and inspiration to keep running this race. And for those of you that have been runners, like Daryl and, and his, his friend that he's lost, but he knows where he is. They ran like crazy. They were animals, unquote. Right? They were workout beasts. So we can understand that those of us when we had different times in our lives when we were you know, keeping our nose to the grindstone and working out, things hurt. 
Max says. And as things hurt, I learned that I have three options. I can quit my run and go home. Demelin would laugh at me, that's his wife. Or I can meditate on what hurts until I start imagining I'm having chest pains. <laughs> Pleasant thought. Or I can keep running and watch the sun, S-U-N, come up. If I watch God's world go from dark to golden, guess what? The same happens to my attitude. The pain passes and joints loosen. Everything improves as I fix my eyes on the sun. Look up, child. That's one of our favorite songs. Look up, child. Do you think God was trying to get my attention? I put that book away and I grabbed down my next devotional. And it was uh, Peace for Today by Billy Graham. And here was the title, Abiding Peace. It's that Colossians 3 passage, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. He's got, he's got to be the rule. To which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Do you know the peace of God? Everyone who knows the Lord Jesus Christ can go through any problem and face death and still have the peace of God in his heart. Billy Graham continues, when your spouse dies, your children get sick, or you lose your job, you can have a peace that you don't understand. You, you will have tears. He, Billy Graham says, you may have tears. I'll t I, I'm just here to tell you, you, you will have tears. But you can have an abiding peace, a quietness. The psychiatrist was quoted in a newspaper paper as saying that he could not improve upon the Apostle Paul's prescription for human worry in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing. How many times do you and I fret and turn looking for a little peace? God's peace can be in your hearts right now. Colossians 3, 15 says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Some of you believe that you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, but you haven't really made him your Lord. And that's where you pause in these devotionals and say, well, I say, well, I'm a preacher. Oh, I get up every morning with God at 4 o'clock and read these scriptures for an hour. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean scratch. Is it, is it a rule in my heart? So some of you know, believe that. You're missing the peace of God in your struggles and turmoils and trials and pressures of life. Is the peace of God in your heart? No boy. And then these devotionals, if many of you have one of your own, ask some kind of question. When in your life have you experienced God's peace? And I wrote in my devotional on Wednesday morning with Billy Graham. Right now. So for a moment, for a little breath, this routine that I just so strictly keep to isn't my strict routine anymore. I took a deep breath and said, thank you. Thanks, Lord. You know, for me, it's just this habit. But every once in a while, you hit me upside the head and say, you do have peace right now. In these devotionals with Billy Graham, Max Licato, Oswald Chambers, Daily Guideposts, and Grace for Today, Thoughts and Prayers. I listed a couple other places where I have peace. I was talking this morning as people were coming in. Our newfound hobby of astronomy. There's nothing like a dark night with stars everywhere to see God's glory and take a deep breath and say, thank you, Lord, for this moment of peace. Camping. I love to go camping. And every once in a while, Cindy and I are sitting there with our cup of coffee, and the birds are singing, the sun's coming up, and the tent's all wet, but we are at peace. Front porch music jam with Cindy. YMCA, peace in activity. 
like crazy on the spin bike. But Cindy and I have new concertinas, and we sat on the front porch and played our little button accordions. A great moment of peace this week. So in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gives this prescription after talking about giving to the needy in Matthew chapter 6. And he teaches about prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Jot that down, the Lord's Prayer. Then he talks a little bit about fasting. And then in verse uh, chapter 6, verse 19 and following, he talks about treasures in heaven. Matthew 6. Verse 19 and following. Treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. I gotta believe one of the treasures of heaven is true, ultimate, peaceful existence. It's not gonna be nothingness. I mean, we, we read there's gonna be singing and, and prayers, and, and those saints that have gone before us are reaching down into that bowl of prayers that Cindy likes to talk about, that golden that bowl, our prayers. All those prayers we uttered this morning are already up in heaven. In this bowl, and saints and angels that have gone before us are taking those prayers out and reading them. They're having their daily devotional. Well, how much more peaceful is that? But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, we talked about this, Daryl. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. Don't worry. Verse 25, therefore I tell you, do not worry about life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Verse 26, a very famous passage. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Do not worry. And then ultimately... My passages of scripture and my devotions this week took me to Joshua. Now, Judges 6, verse 24. Judges 6. Joshua was the first judge, technically, and then the book of Judges follows. And in chapter 6, at the 24th verse, after Gideon, this was about Gideon, had been following some directions of the, of the Lord God about uh, all these enemies that he had and, and building an altar to our God. And this is what Gideon says. So Gideon built, and what he did, Gideon built an altar to the Lord, and he called it, the Lord is peace. To this day it stands in Ophrah of the Ebezerites. Judges 6, verse 24. We miss that when we read it in English because Gideon built this altar and he called it the Lord is peace. And some of you know that what that word is in the Hebrew. Some of you know Hebrew. You didn't know that, did you? Shalom. Shalom doesn't just simply mean peace. It's one of the names of God. God's name is peace. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. Um, Jehovah Ratha. There's a there are a whole number of ways that God is named in, in the Bible. And Jehovah Shalom is another name for God. God's name means peace. It's mysterious. You got to search for it. You got to search for it in routine. You got to search for it in a willingness to, 
to hear God's name as peace, and even in our struggles, we've got to pause and look for that, for that peace. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this new year, and it's underway, it's going already, great guns of fire. Lord, help us each to take a deep breath. Thank you for our blessings to turn those things that trouble us over to you and to look for that little bit of peace that we might build on. Be with us this week and help us each to watch for those places where you're, you're bidding us to be at peace, it's chill, and to know that you are God. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Let's stand and let's stand and sing one more time. Get the right pitch for this. Boy, we miss Peg. We're praying, praying for you, Peg. The song, the song sheets are at the sides of the room if you want to see the words. <coughs> Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred might is like to that above. Now go on from here as humble people. It takes some real humility to, to just quiet your, your heart and, and watch for God's peace in your life. Or whatever that word is that you have this year. My word was trust, remember? And that, that still kept washing over me as I did my devotionals this week. They're all related. All God's good gifts are related. Clark, chapter 1, verse 2. <laughs> all these good gifts are related for peace, Lord, for patience, for joy. Make me humble. Help me to trust and give me peace. And go on from here as quiet, people. For in the quiet, you'll hear the good news. God loves you and cares for you and never going to let you go. And now the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the comfort and friendship of the Holy Spirit is ours now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 See you in the future or Amen. see you in the pasture. Oh yeah, Amen. Amen.